Hello students and welcome to my channel Maths Hub. So in the previous videos, we are discussing the rules for particular integral. And in this video, I'll tell you the rule number six of the particular integral, right? So before we move on to rule number six, let us quickly revise all the rest of the rules that we have learned so far. Inverse operator, one by d of q is integration, q dx. Rule number one says that whenever we have exponential function, we need to replace d with a. Rule number two says whenever we have sine or cos as a trigonometric function, we'll replace d square with minus a square. And then the third case is when we have sine hyperbolic or cos hyperbolic functions, we'll replace d square with plus a square. Then rule number four says that whenever we have powers of x, then we will always expand fd. We'll take it in the numerator and we will expand it in descending orders of d. And we need to retain only those terms of d till the power exponent m, right? Whenever the order of the derivative exceeds the exponent, the derivatives will all become zero, right? Then the fifth case that we have discussed was whenever we have a product function and in the product we have one of the functions as exponential, then the exponential comes out and we replace d with d plus a. And then this operator works on the function v. So whatever is your v function accordingly, we will solve it, right? So now I'll tell you about the sixth rule, case number six. So whenever we have a linear term in our d, f, d function, so we know that if this a is not there, if it is simply one by d, then it becomes an integral. Now, when we have a linear expression as one upon d minus a times q, then how does it get open? It is e to the power ax multiplied by integration q into e raised to power minus ax dx. Right. Now, sometimes it might happen that we have some product, uh, many linear terms are there in our product, right? So we can take the help of the partial fractions and we can split up the terms like this. And then we will get, we can split up the particular integrals and then every term in this will get converted to this integration formula. Right. So I'm again repeating one upon d minus a into q is e raised to power ax into integration q into e raised to power minus ax d. Right. So let's try to apply this on a question and let's see how much we understand the rule. So we need to solve d2y by dx squared plus 9y is equal to secant 3x. So on the right hand side, solve. So I so I'm I am assuming that you will be able to solve the homogeneous solution. So in short, we'll, the auxiliary equation will be d squared plus nine. So when we convert this into an algebraic expression, we'll get m squared plus nine is equal to zero. So m comes out to be plus minus three iota. So I'm not elaborating this part because I am assuming that you understand it, right? And you will be able to calculate it. So complementary solution will be e raised to power 0x will become 1. So we simply get c1 cos 3x plus c2 sin 3x, right? So this sin 3x. So this is our complementary solution. Now let us work upon the particular integral. So yp is, let me write it over here. yp is 1 by d squared plus 9 into secant 3a. So now here you can see that the right hand side function is a very different function and we don't know a direct rule for this. So in that case, what does the method says that you convert the denominator into linear factors. So we can see that the factors are plus minus 3 iota. So we can write this term as d plus 3 iota into d minus 3 iota, right? Multiplied by secant 3a. So now this is a product. So we can convert this into partial fractions and we can write this as a upon d plus 3 iota plus b upon d minus 3 iota, right? And when you apply the partial fractions, you will find that a comes out to be minus 1 by 6 iota. And B comes out to be plus 1 by 6 iota, right? This is applied on secant 3. 
So, I can take out 1 by 6 iota common and I can arrange these terms as 1 by d minus 3 iota minus 1 by d plus 3 iota into secant 3a. So, you can see that I will get 2 particular integrals, right? 1 by d minus 3 iota into secant 3x and 1 plus d plus 3 iota into secant 3x. So, now let me take one of the terms and we will see how to get the other term. So, I am solving the first term 1 by d minus 3 iota into secant 3x. So, according to the rule, it says that it will be e raised to power, what is a? a is minus 3 iota. So, it is e raised to power ax, so 3 iota x, integration e raised to power minus 3 iota x into secant 3x dx, right? So, now you will be requiring this, how can we expand e raised to power iota theta? This is basically cos theta plus iota sin theta. And if we have e raised to power minus iota theta, then it is cos theta minus iota sin theta, right? So, we will use this concept. So, this is e raised to power 3 iota x integration. So, here iota is nothing but iota into 3x with a negative sign. So, this will become cos 3x minus iota sin 3x and what is secant 3x? It is 1 by cos 3x, right? So, we get this as e raised to power 3 iota x integration cos by cos is simply dx minus tan 3x or instead of writing tan, I can also write it as sine by cos only, right? Sine by cos 3x dx. So, now let us take the integral. So, this is e raised to power 3 iota x integration of 1 is x minus. Now, derivative of cos 3x is 3 sin 3x. So, we can multiply with 3 and divide by 3. So, I will get plus 1 by 3 iota I will also get and I will get log of. So, you can see the derivative of cos is lying there. So, log of cos 3x, right? So, this can be written as iota by 3 log of cos 3a. Now, similarly, on a similar note, if I change iota to minus iota, minus iota to plus iota, will I get 1 by d plus 3 iota then into secant 3x? So, the same steps, I will just replace iota with minus iota. So, this will be e raised to power minus 3 iota x and then I will get x minus iota by 3 log of cos 3x, right? So, I got both the values. So, what is my final yp? So, yp comes out to be 1 by 6 iota and then I have e raised to power 3 iota x, x plus iota by 3 log cos x, log cos 3x in fact, minus e raised to power minus 3 iota x, x minus iota by 3 log cos 3 So, what you can do is, you can open up the brackets and you will find that some of the terms are getting cancelled, right? So, this term is cos 3x plus iota sin 3x multiplied by x plus iota by 3 log cos 3x. Then we have cos 3x minus iota sin 3x and multiplied by x minus iota by 3 log cos 3x, right? So, what will I get finally? I will get 1 by 6 iota. So, let us multiply x into cos 3x plus iota by 3 cos 3x into log cos 3x plus iota x in iota into sin 3x 
right iota into yeah i'll get x also iota into x sin 3x and then iota into iota will become iota square so i'll get minus 1 by 3 sin 3x into log cos 3x right let's open up this this is minus cos x into cos 3x then i'll have cos 3x into this is this cos 3x into this is my own minus minus into minus is plus so this is plus iota by 3 cos 3x into log cos 3x then minus and minus plus i'll get iota x sin 3x then minus into minus is plus and then again a minus sign so finally i'll get minus into minus is plus iota square is minus and i'll get a plus sign plus 1 by 3 sin 3x by 3 into log cos 3x right so now let's cancel out the terms this gets cancelled this gets cancelled that's it iota will also get cancelled right so finally i get 1 by 6 2 by 3 cos 3x into log cos 3x and i'll get 2x sign see when i can cancel out this 2 so i'll get 1 here this gets cancelled and this gets cancelled too right so finally your answer comes out to be y is the general solution is c1 cos 3x plus c2 sin 3x plus I can multiply the term. So, it is cos 3x log cos 3x divided by 9 plus x sin 3x divided by 3. Right. So I hope you have understood the method. Right. So, do try these problems and do let me know in the comment section whether you were able to solve it or not. Right. In case of any doubt, do ask in the comment section so if you like the video do hit the like button and those of you who have not subscribed my channel do subscribe my channel to get the latest updated video thank you so much believe in yourself and you will be able to succeed